Hey guys, I got a I got a really neat surprise. Well, it wasn't really a surprise. I ordered. I got a, a 3D printer, and uh, it's in the mail, and it's all in pieces. I actually did an unboxing video, and my sound didn't come out, so I'm a little pissed off about that. But I'm gonna show you what came in the box, even though I won't be pulling it in the, out of the box. It's all right here in front of us, so let's take a look at it. All right. So here we are. Um, this is all the frame material. I gotta peel all this stuff out. Somebody said that um, if you soak these in hot water, it makes this easier to peel. I don't know about that. I'm gonna try a little piece first. I'll let you guys know how that works out when I do the assembly video. All right, we got four lineal bearings. These are for the undercarriage for the um, the Y. We got a Z motor. We got two Z motors actually with the little couplings on them, little flex couplings. We got an X motor. We got a Y motor. These are uh, these are actually some things I ordered. This is a uh, what do you call that? Proximity sensor for uh, bed leveling. I ordered that separately. I got it from uh, GearBest, you know, where I ordered the printer. Um, I ordered that. It was like 12 bucks, I believe. They give you a mount, but I think the the mounts for a for an A8. I, I got the A6, and I bought some spare 4.4 uh, millimeter nozzles. All right, these are the uh, the rods, you know, for the guides for the linear bearings. And we got a couple of lead screws. And then we got threaded rods. These hold the frame together. I'm not sure what the short one is for, but we'll figure it out. They gave me some tools. We got a couple of a couple of Allen, three Allen, four Allen wrenches in there, a little wrench and a Phillips screwdriver, and they give you this flat screwdriver. And they give you the little clippers for the uh, filament. USB cable, limit switches. Yeah, I don't know why there's only one Z limit switch and there's two motors. Um, when I built my CNC plasma cutter, I had two Z limit switches, you know, one for each motor. So that way, there you can automatically uh, set auto, automatically set your Z. But. Uh, but I guess these Z motors, they get tied into the same motor controller. That's the way I understand it. Mine were t into two separate motor controllers. Uh, we'll figure it out. And we got so we got one for the X, one for the Y, one for the Z. There's some spacers in there. I'm sure I'll figure all that out. Here's the little what a cute little blower fan. This is for cooling off the nozzle. And we got, this is the wire for the heat bed and the bed thermistor. I think I'm going to, the, the wires for the heat bed, I think I'm going to solder those and I'm going to put bigger, bigger wires on there. Because I guess people have problems with that heat overheating at the connector. These are all the wires that go from the steppers to the uh, to the control boards plus there's probably a few other wires in there this is the main board comes in a box let's see we got X motor let me open that up so you guys can take a quick look at it This thing looks like it's going to go together fairly easily. We'll figure all that out, I guess. This is the wire wrap stuff. I'm not going to use this crap. I'm just going to use tie wraps because I know I'm going to be undoing and redoing the wires a lot with upgrades and modifications, so I'm not going to use this. Maybe once I get it to where I like it, but I'm not going to use it. I doubt it. 
power cord. This is the LCD screen. Let's open that up. That's cool. Nice, nice. Remove seal after washing. What the hell? Where do we wash it? Oh, this got the little beeper thing. I heard this beeper is real annoying. Guess there's a way to deactivate it. And I think this is uh, the cancel button. I think there's a cancel button on this, so if something gets really crazy, gets wonky, and things start going awry, you can just hit that and it stops everything. These are the two Z axis that run up and down the, the Z rods. Let's see how these bearings fit. There's a little bit of slop in there. I have to put some preload on this. Let's see how these lead screws go. The other thing I'm going to do before I even start putting this together is I'm going to I'm going to run these rods on a flat surface to see if they're bent and straighten them out or whatever if I have to. See, all this is put together, so that's pretty good. I'm going to double check, make sure everything's nice and firm. Make sure they're nice and tight. All right, I got another one just like it. Here's the extruder head. Same deal, linear bearings, a hot end. I saw a guy download something from uh, Thingiverse. And he was actually doing flexible filament with this with this head. And the little part that he printed out that goes right in there. And he was printing out flexible filament. So I'm definitely going to try that. Because the flexible filament really, really appeals to me. I can already think of a bunch of projects I, I want to do with that. And they give you a roll of PLA, white PLA. I'm glad they didn't send me some crazy color. I like, I'm kind of a no frills guy. I like white, black, gray. I am a little partial to blue. I like blue. But I don't like all them orange and bright greens and all that. But you never know. Here's all the hardware. Springs, nuts, bolts, washers. This is the uh, the bed. Well, not the bed. This is the bed carriage. Here's the heated bed. I guess this screws right to that with the spring. Oh, look at that. They did me a favor. They put masking tape on it. Look, isn't that great? Look, look at all the bubbles in there. <laughs> wow, they're awesome. All right, we're getting rid of that shit. I got plenty of blue tape right here. Here's the power supply. 12 volt. Uh, it's 12 volt, 20 amp. I already ordered the uh, MOSFETs for the heated bed. I actually ordered two. I ordered one for the heated bed and one for the uh, for the nozzle heater here. I figured what the heck, they were pretty cheap. But they're going to take a while to come from China. I probably won't be seeing those for another couple weeks. So I'm going to, I'm definitely going to try to run this just the way it sits right now. Because I, I want a baseline. You know, I want a baseline to see, you know, how this thing functions stock. And then I'm going to do the modifications. Um, that way there I'm going to see where, you know, what made a difference and what didn't. And um, I think... Uh, I think this is going to be a cool little printer, man. I'm so excited. Um, you know, 3D printing, even just, uh, let me see, 2012, 2011. I mean, that was an ex expensive undertaking back then. And now, now, I mean, you can get into this really cheap. Super cool. Super cool.
You know, I'll, I'm really, really excited about this. I can't wait to start making stuff with plastic, man. You know, and I mean, I got a complete machine shop over here. But, um, you know, even just making prototypes, even just uh, before I actually machine them out of metal, I mean, this is going to be cool because I'll be able to design things in Fusion 360 and, and uh, you know, see how things fit together and everything will be in Fusion 360 with all the dimensions and then I can, you know, if I so choose, I can actually make some of this stuff out of metal, you know. So it's going to be pretty, pretty cool, man. I'm excited. And this being my first foray into 3D printing, not CNC, because I built a CNC uh, plasma cutter from scratch. Um, and that was an undertaking, because that was really from scratch. I mean, this here, I'm just putting stuff together. That thing, I, I actually designed it and ordered all the parts and everything. So, um, And I did that just because uh CNC plasma table was probably around... For a decent one, it was like ten grand, and I, I think I was into the whole thing for about two thousand twenty-five hundred bucks. So, you know, who knows? Maybe once I get this going, and I, and if I really like three D printing, I might actually build one from scratch. You know, this is just to get my feet wet here. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable how small this stuff is. You know, I think it's pretty, pretty darn cool, man. All right, so that's it. That was kind of my uh, almost unboxing. I had unboxed one, and it was like watching silent pictures. Uh, I was so mad, and I was going to do a voiceover, but I really don't know how to do that in the computer yet, so I figured I would just go over the parts. Um, oh, here's the other thing. I actually made uh, made an enclosure for this already. Let me show you uh, what that looks like. Made out of OSB, and it's all made out of junk I had laying around. These are just scrap pieces of OSB I had laying around, three-quarter inch. Um put a handle on it, it's got hinges on it, plexiglass, this is plexiglass I had laying around, I guess those are the, uh, those are the advantages of being a contractor, you got leftover materials to play with. Look for more videos on this ANET A6, I'm definitely going to do a video on putting it together, and as I'm doing modifications to this, and if I find any problems as I'm going, I might even make some videos specific to that and how I fix it you know how I fixed it or modified it so so that it's better so stay tuned guys if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe right down below and uh, I'll see you soon